It's Wild Card Wednesday with Crafting Cousins. What are we up to today? Stick around and we'll find out. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this piece that I found at Goodwill this weekend. It was 50% off, so I got it for $3. I think it was originally a CD holder, but we're going to repurpose it for the base of a bird bath. This tray that I got from Goodwill, a solar fountain that I ordered from Amazon, a wood bead from my stash, some coulard I got from Ikea. I'm not real sure what this actually is some Gorilla Glue and some water to activate it, some Krylon spray paint, this is the paint and primer, some florals and ivy garland from Dollar Tree, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace the bead that was missing off of this base. I didn't have one that was the same size. This one is a little bit bigger. So I just put a little bit of paper in there to keep it a little bit tight. And then I just add some hot glue in there and replace it. And it works just fine. Now I'm going to take my tray and my base outside and spray it with my Krylon paint and primer. I did end up having to give it several light coats. Once this is dry, I want to decorate the edges of my tray. So I took this Coulort, I guess is how you say it. I have no idea how you really say it. I picked this up at Ikea a couple of years ago and I'm not really sure what it is. It looks like crushed glass, but it is not glass. You can see that I am rubbing it with my hands and it did not cut me in any way, but it is really um, flashy and it's really pretty once you put it on there. So I'm just taking my hot glue and I put a good coat around the edge of this and then dip it in there and I love how it looks. Now don't worry about it flaking off. I do, once this is dry, I take some Mod Podge and go over the top of this to seal it in so that it won't flake off into my water. We just keep doing this all the way around the edge of our tray and I love how this looked once it was finished. Now I want to decorate the base of my bird bath. So I'm going to use some of these ivy garlands that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to take one of my zip ties and zip it into place down there at the bottom. And then I just start twisting it around. I go in and out of the different little poles and go around through the middle and up another one. And I come back around at the top and come down. I just wanted to give it the look of an ivy growing on it. I was only going to use two of these, but once I got the two on there, I thought it needed one more just to give it that perfect balance. So I did end up using three of these. I just twisted around. I don't have a rhyme or reason. I just twisted it how I liked it, and then I would secure it with my zip ties and trim it off. Once I got all my garland on there, I took these pretty little pink flowers that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure what these are supposed to be. It just says flowering bush. Um, I liked that they were long and skinny and you could take them off of the base. So I would pull them off and then I did use the zip ties on some of it. Some of it I didn't have to. I could twist it into the ivy and it would stay in place. And then sometimes I would use just a little dab of hot glue to keep it in place. Um, again, I just kind of twisted it around until I liked how it looked. I didn't really have a rhyme or a reason, but I did only put this on two of the poles. I thought that if I put it on all four of them, it would be a little overwhelming. So I just kept it to the front ones and I really was pleased with how it came out. I am so loving all of these beautiful flowers this spring, and I think I'm even going to carry them over into summer. I'm just loving how fresh they make everything look. 
Now I had to move it down to the floor. I couldn't get a good camera angle and I was wanting to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue that tray onto this base. So I take a little bit of water and I just kind of dab it on top of those wooden beads. You don't want to soak them, you just want to dampen them. Then I take my Gorilla Glue and I put a good squirt of it on each one of these beads. And yes, you do need the water to activate the glue. Then I put my tray down on top of it and press it down and I'm going to leave it for at least 24 hours to cure. Once it's cured and set up, we'll just take it outside. We'll put our little floating fountain in there and fill it up with water. There is my bird bath outside. I love how this turned out. I do want to keep it over by the lake, but the wind was insane today. It was blowing it over, so I moved it up to the porch to try to get some pictures so I could show you how it looks. But here it is in all of its glory. I love this so much. You can see how bad the wind was. <laughs> I'm looking forward to when the wind calms down and I can get this in place and my little birdies can enjoy it all summer. Today we are excited to be teaming up with our friend Chantel from Love and Life's Journey for a summer decor themed collaboration. If you haven't heard of Chantel, we hope that you will check her out. She is so sweet and talented, you are going to love the variety of gorgeous DIYs and crafting information she has on her channel. When you finish our video, go over and check out what she has created. We will have a link to her video in the description box below. Make sure you tell her we sent you over. If you are new and coming over from Chantel's channel, welcome. We are so happy to have you join us. We release four videos each week. We're sure you can find something you will like with Crafting Cousins. Now, let's craft y'all! Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these wreaths that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's called a Wood Blend Wreath. This one is a new one for my store. I'm going to be using about 10 sets of these hydrangeas that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using this beautiful green and also this blue with green centers. These are my two favorites and then I'm going to also add in a few more colors. I will also use a few off-white, some light blue and the darker blue as well. I just love hydrangeas for summer. I'm going to use some of this one and a half inch ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. It has the cute blue truck on it and I will also need a chenille stem to make a bow. And finally, I'm going to use my wire cutters and my glue pot by Surebinder. When you're doing floral wreaths, it is the bomb.com, y'all. I'm going to use this wreath very much like I would use a grapevine wreath, but it is a lot cheaper. Luckily, these florals are not heavy, and so it will serve the purpose just fine. To prepare our florals, I'm going to pull the bunches aside, push the leaves towards the bloom, and then cut it off at about four to six inches. You really don't need a lot of length. I just left some length in the beginning because I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to do it. Now I'll just begin dipping the ends of my florals into my glue pot and you just kind of twist it as you bring it up and out and then you place it down into your wreath form and let it dry a little bit. Then I'm going to go around kind of clockwise and I'll pull back the blooms just a little bit and go in with my second stalk and push that down into the wreath. I want my main colors to be this green and the blue with the green centers. So now I'm going in with this off-white color. And then I'm just going to start working my way around the wreath, filling in with those colors first. Because the wreath isn't exactly uniform in size all the way around, and the flowers in the each bunch is not exactly the same size, you just have to use your own judgment as to how wide you will go each time across the wreath form. What I'm trying to say is you want to keep it about the same width as you work your way around the wreath. And at the end, 
you'll just come back and fill in any holes where you think it needs to be a little wider. Now I'm going to speed it up quite a bit more because I'm doing the same repetitive process, but I did want to tell you that I'm using first those three main colors and placing them in, even if they're not quite the width that I want the final product to be, I can tell how many stems I have left. And so I'm working my way around to get all of that color in first. And then once I'm here towards the end, I've kind of met in the middle where I started, then I'm going to go back and what I'm going to do is fill in with the lighter blue, the darker blue, the other flowers that I showed you earlier. And the hardest part at this point is knowing when to quit. Now let's make a bow. I'm going to use my Easy Bow Maker. I'm going to make seven inch tails and I will have four inch loops on each side. You just twist the ribbon each time when you go between the pegs. And I'm going to put about five loops on each side. And once I finish that, I'm going to have an extra loop right in the middle. We'll just cut off our ribbon. Then I'll remove it from the Easy Bow Maker and I'm going to take a chenille stem and place it right around the center of the ribbon behind that extra loop and twist it tight around the back. And then we'll just start fluffing out our bow, pulling each loop to the front and the back, the top and the bottom. You just want to fluff it out nicely and then dovetail that last end. And now I'm going to place it down into the wreath. I want mine towards the bottom. I'm going to have it hang that way. And I did use a chenille stem also to make a hanger for the back of my wreath. I'll just secure it with a little hot glue there. I'll cut off the excess chenille stem. And with that, our wreath is complete. I am so excited. Summer will be here before we know it, y'all. Hey, y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this small teapot that I found at Goodwill for $1.49. Some bead trim from the home decor section at Hobby Lobby. It comes already together. I had taken this apart for another project some bead drops from the wedding section at Hobby Lobby, some small bead trim from the home decor section, some jump rings from the jewelry section, a button from my stash, some fishing line. I needed a hook, but I didn't have one. So I'm gonna take this piece that had broke off of one of those Dollar Tree trellises and use it for a hook. Some Gorilla Glue and a little water to activate it, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was go through my buttons until I found one that I liked that would not fit through the spout of the teapot. You don't want it to pull through there. You want it to fit in snugly. Then I cut a piece of my fishing line and I'm going to tie it to the shank on the back of my button. I just did a double knot and got it really tight. And then I'm gonna take that fishing line and thread it through the spout on my teapot and pull it really tight until I get it lodged in there. Now I'm gonna take some of this bead trim. I love this stuff. It comes put together and I use it in a lot of projects and I had took this down to smaller pieces, but I want it to be a little bit longer for this one. So we're gonna put it back together. All you do is take your pliers and twist that little loop at the end. Always twist it, never pull it. Add your beads back and then twist it back into place and now you have a longer piece. You can do the same thing to shorten it. Now I'm going to put it on my fishing line and pull it all the way up into my spout and tie a double knot and secure it really well, then trim it off. Now it looks like it's pouring out of my teapot. I wanted to have a big drop at the end and I love these little crystal drops that they have over in the wedding section. They're on a little stem. It, it looks like it goes in maybe a floral arrangement. And I took one of these and I put a jump ring on the end of it. I twisted it open and then put it through my bead and added my bead to the end of my string. Now I want 
to attach my lid to my teapot permanently so it doesn't fall out. So I put a little bit of water around the rim on the inside and then I add my Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue does need a little dampness to help it set up. Then I'm just going to put a drop of hot glue on each side to hold it in place until the Gorilla Glue cures. To make a hanger for this, I'm going to use some of this small bead trim that I also get from the home decor section and I'm going to put a jump ring on the end of it. Now you always twist your jump rings open. Never pull them because you're going to distort the um, shape of them. You just want to twist them. Then I put it through the little loops of the bead garland and I twist it back closed and this attaches it around the handle of my teapot. Now we will just trim off the end of this. I figured out how long I wanted it to hang. And then I'm going to put another jump ring in the other end. Again, always twist your jump rings. Now we will put it on our little hook, but it's not quite a hook yet. I needed one, didn't have one, so I'm going to use this piece. I just use my pliers and twist around the end of it until it curls in. And there's our completed piece. This is such a simple piece to make, but it is so pretty. I love having the beads pour out of the teapot, and I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to hang it on my porch or hang it out by the lake, but either way, I love having this as part of my summer decor. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using four of these little frames that I got at the Dollar Tree. They are about 5 inches by 5 inches. Some of this leftover eucalyptus, I think it originally came from Hobby Lobby. These three wooden letters, I got mine at the Dollar General and they were $1 each. One 12 by 12 sheet of scrapbook paper, some wooden beads, three white chenille stems, and instead of the green one, I did end up using a three inch grapevine wreath. Some Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. And finally, some Mod Podge in a matte finish. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the sawtooth hangers from all four of my little frames. It just takes a few seconds with a little screwdriver. Then I'm going to remove all of the stickers off of the back of these frames because I'm actually going to be using the back of the frame and not the front. And I also removed the items that were on the front. And then I went in with some spackling and I'm going to fill in all of the gaps between the cardboard and my frame. I decided to do this on all of them. The next thing I'm going to do is paint my three letters with my ivory chalk paint. I'm going to paint all of the edges and the front as well. These letters, by the way, are nice and thick and chunky and they are about four inches tall. The next thing I'm going to do is give my wooden beads a good coat of the same chalk paint. This color, ivory. I just put them on a skewer, use a little poster putty in the corner, and that's the easiest way I have come up with to paint them. And then I'm going to go in and paint my frames as well. I'm going to paint the outside and then turn them over to what used to be the back but will now be the front and put a good coat across there as well. I'm not going to cover the whole thing because we're going to cover it with pretty paper. I used my paper trimmer and I cut my squares of scrapbook paper at four and three quarters inches by four and three quarters inches. You don't have to have a paper trimmer. It was just convenient to do it that way. You can always use a ruler and some scissors. Now I'm going to go in with some Mod Podge and I'm going to apply a generous coat to what was the back of my frame but is now going to be our front. But you do want to keep your coat of Mod Podge as even as possible. 
And then I will take a little water and spritz the back of my scrapbook paper because it's really thick. This is by Prima. It's nice paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. And we'll just smooth that out and get out all of the air bubbles. And to further assist in that, I just take a piece of this wax paper and place it on top so I don't end up tearing my scrapbook paper. And that just helps smooth everything down. And then I just did the same thing to the next three frames as well. I like to do things the easy way. So I decided I would take seven of the wooden beads and string them onto a chenille stem. And I'm going to do that three times. And I guess I didn't tell you that earlier, but you will need 21 of these wooden beads. Then I'm just going to go in with a little hot glue and I'm going to put a dot on the top of each of the seven beads. That part can get a little messy, so it would be nice to have a precision tip glue gun. And then I just place my frame on top of the beads. And then I'm coming in with some more glue on the bottom of the beads. And then we'll glue it to the second frame. And that's how I'm going to attach all four frames together. And once all four of the frames are connected, you can either cut off the chenille stem with some wire cutters, or you can also pull it out and just put some putty in the holes at the end. I'm going to take my eucalyptus and cut off small pieces and then just cover this three inch grapevine wreath that I got some time ago at Hobby Lobby. I just keep going and placing on pieces and adding more glue until I get it covered sufficiently to look cute with my finished piece. And there it is. Now I'm going to take hot glue and I'm going to put a generous amount on the back of the grapevine wreath and then I'm going to apply it down to the second frame. Of course, we're spelling out the word home. Then I'll just use my hot glue and go ahead and attach the rest of my letters. I really like how this turned out. Shabby Chic is really my favorite decorating style. I use it mostly in my she shed though. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye, y'all.